check out our online training programs. If you're a competitor in CrossFit, check out TTT Compete. For those of you that want to look good and feel good, check out TTT Fitness. Head to trainingthinktank.com for more info. We've already been Mr. Ridden. Mayor, welcome yeah, back, my friend. Welcome back from Saturday. Does anybody, wait, you were on here Saturday? He doesn't know? Oh, <laughs> I uh, no so clue. I did this Saturday and apparently I vented <laughs> and I shouldn't have vented about certain things. And so <laughs> wait, I wanna, let's just, let's go let's, right back. We're, gonna, it. we're running it back. Yeah. I okay. guess that's fine that I talk about that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Bring it up. What'd you vent about? No, don't. Sorry. I'm not going to bring up what I vented about. Does anybody we'll call you vented. Mr. Mayor? Like now that Mr. you have Mayor? four kids, you know, you have other kids running around the house and they're like, yeah, Mr. Mayor. No, Boston will sometimes go, Travis. And I'm like, stop. <laughs> yeah. You don't call me wrong? that. You do not call Kinsley me that. Kinsley does that now. She She's thinks like, it's hilarious. But that's your name. I'm like, no, I'm dad. <laughs> dad. You call me dad. You know, Kinsley also has started saying dad and mom instead of daddy and mommy. And Jordan, like it breaks her heart. She's like, call me mommy oh. <laughs> instead of mom. <laughs> She's like, I always yeah, feel like that's weird, especially when you meet adults who call their dad, daddy. I'm like. Oh. Well, when they're two or three. No, no, that's fine. But once you hit 18. Like even when my dad's working out, I'll be like, dad, dad, <laughs> what'd you, what was your time? Dad. Could you imagine if you were like, hey, daddy, what, what was your time? Daddy? Yeah, that'd be weird. <laughs> that, do yeah, you, that's, but people do that. Do you ever call your parents by their first name? Yeah. If he doesn't respond to dad, I'll yeah. be like, Jack. That, no, I, same thing. Jack, get over here. So your parents' name are Jack and Rose. How crazy Roseanne. is that? Roseanne. Not she goes Rose. by Rose? No? Mm, she'll respond to you, but it's Roseanne. I was going to say, I've never heard any. Oh, okay. Call I was Rose. like, dang, they got the Titanic names. That is true, though. But his, it's real, very name, his real name is Jacques, is his real name. Right, okay, but people fine. always get don't confused have by that. Okay. So then he goes by Jack, and then my mom's name's Rose. But how it's spelled J A C Q U E S. Right. And people, people still say I remember say growing Jack. up, we'd answer the phone and they'd be like, Jacquees? Is Jacquees Mayor there? And I'm like, nope, that guy's not here. He's not. Sorry, you have the wrong number. <laughs> that actually is really funny. Uh, they, I mean, they would come up with all sorts of names. And I was like, do you mean Jack? You know, Jacques? well, I mean, you can't I get that though. No, yeah, yeah, yeah no, but it's funny because I'm like, pronounce. no, he's not here. <laughs> you got the wrong guy. It's, it's wrong some one. business guy that's actually needs to talk to him. Yeah. Like my brother's name Jacques too. He's like Jacques no. Mitchell Mayer. Oh, but I he always, always thought his name was Mitchell. Mitchell. Yeah. yeah. And so like only like close friends would be like Jacques. So they'll call him like Jacques occasionally. But oh, I, I never knew. I would have just figured. Well, what's your middle name? Lee. Brandon Lee. Yeah. Brandon Lee. 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 Brandon but Lee. No, also, my, no one gets my name right, but it's not because of oh. pronunciations. They, they just always say Brandon because that's what they hear. For the longest of, time when you were here, I said that. Brandon? Yeah. Brandon. Like, everybody just, thinks your name's Brandon. Yeah. It's Brandon. Yes. Nin. And, and I remember somebody, Max said something, and I was like, no, Brandon. He's like, no, it's Brandon. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I've been calling him the wrong name for a while. I'm so used to it my whole life. But I feel like if you say it fast enough, yeah. it still sounds close to like what it would be. So yeah, for Brandon, sure. Maybe Brandon. there's a lot of Brandons out there being called Brandon. There's no chance. <laughs> Zero chance. Hey, but Brandon. you know, now if I, you know, like you do, you call in like an order or whatever, I just say Brandon. Like I make the D sound oh, so, they so that they don't screw it up because if I say Brandon fast, they still screw oh, it why up. Why don't you go, Brandon, Brandon. Brandon. Let me spell it for you. Yeah. B-R-A-N-N-E-N for all those listening. Brandon. We yeah. have Travis back on the podcast because he's the coolest data four. Strongest. One of the strongest data four. Best CrossFitter that's a data four. Yeah, thanks. Anything else? Any other things I could ooh, add on to that? I got a question. Uh, right off the jump, as all these uh, other CrossFitters are pushing out babies, are you getting a little jealous Like that you're not like the... The only like dad in the market now. A little, I'm a little upset. I mean, are it's you about, really though? No, I'm not really, not at all. Um, I mean, I think it's cool. I mean, you at least have more athletes that are now understanding how to balance everything from training to kids to the yeah, everyday I, life. I feel like you but, grow up. You know, the, so the first when was how, how old were you when Boston was born? He was born in 2015, so I was 24. Yeah, 24. I mean, you were relatively young, but let's just say from zero to 24, you learned so much. Yeah. 24 to 25, you learned triple what you learned from zero to 24, yeah. having a kid and learning how to balance and you know, your marriage. I mean, everything changes. So it's just like, until you have that experience, I, I think it's really you hard can't to explain. Yeah. It's even like having a kid. Like you can't express how the love for the <laughs> exactly. individual feels until it actually happens. So true. But here's a question though. What about having boys versus having a girl <laughs> because that would, also is different. Yeah. I would say like the initial, no, you have three boys. Yeah. So I have three boys and then the last one is a girl. The whole process, I would say lead up everything. And then even when she was born versus them, I still felt 
the same, I would say like as they were born now that she's like getting older and like looking at me and like the smiles <laughs> and the other things, then I'm like, that's the difference I feel like. Yeah. Or then when she like cuddles up next to you, it's more of it's like a, different a feel. protection kind of like feel than it is. Not that I don't for my boys, but it's just, a, yeah, it is different. Yeah. It's, it's hard, hard to explain. I've, I've tried to explain that to people before, but you have a boy and a girl. I have one. Yeah. One boy, one girl, not, not four like Travis over there. He's gonna have twins. Maybe too. a maybe a third at some point. Oh. No announcements. No. Um, but it, there is some kind of like protection. One of it's ones. weird how to explain that. You know what I mean? But you <laughs> feel more protective over your girl and, yeah. and what, what, whatever. Well, I feel like culturally. even when I was talking to Lauren about it, she's like, "Well, why?" And I was like, "I don't know. It's just yeah. like a natural instinct." I to think like we're wired for it. Protect. I mean, that's just how it is. Think more about it. So you would do anything for your children and yeah. you don't realize what you would do for them. I mean, you would jump in front of a bus for your child and without thinking about it. And maybe the most selfish person wouldn't even think that until they have a child. And then yeah. all of a sudden they're like, I'll do anything for that kid. Yeah. And you hear the stories of like the mom picking up the lawnmower or, off the kid because they get or a like, car. Yeah. That, car. Super human strength because this like desire to protect your children. Well, even so. yesterday. So we're downstairs jumping on the trampoline. I'm not, I'm outside of the trampoline, but Boston. Well, you have an <laughs> in-house trampoline? Do I, well, we have an in-house bounce house. A bounce house inside. You have a bounce house? And you have a basement. pretty sweet basement. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So it's like in the basement. They Think just of love what Matt jumping. Fraser's kids are going to have. You used you to have, have a bounce house. Mat mat mattresses up against the wall yeah, or something, so right? And then they could just run and jump against the wall. Yeah, and sounds do stuff. sick. So then now we got like a bounce house that like goes in the basement and they just jump around. But then now that we have a trampoline outside, Boston was jumping yesterday and this kid all of a sudden just bloody murder screams. Oh. And I'm oh. like, what just happened? <laughs> I got stung by a bee <laughs> and it, under his neck, like oh, under no. his chest. And this was the first time he's ever been stung. And man, my immediate reaction, I jump up really fast. Holy, I'm like, what happened? What happened? He's like, I got and I mean, he's freaking out. Cause it, I mean, it hurts. Like, yeah. But the first one, like right under the chin. That's the and worst. And then we went inside and he's like, ah. <laughs> hey, the first time I ever got hit with a paintball was right in oh, the throat. Oh, that man, I used so to bad. let my brother shoot me and I would run back and forth. Like I would just, you See, guys were ridiculous. I would just be like, Hey, just shoot Did as you many times as you want. Catch one in the throat. I mean, I got hit a lot, but it uh, does for some sting. reason it was, I like enjoyed the discomfort <laughs> and pain, which I feel like is probably why I like CrossFit, but it was like, I enjoyed the suffering of that well, for the, some reason. So you, that was just your brother at the house. So when you go to the parks, there's like set, um, pressure, I guess that you have to put it on parks? recommended. The PSI like the, of the how fast parks. Oh, yeah. we, like, I was like, like, each other. We, like a playground park. Like, what <laughs> yeah. are you talking about? You never went to those. Yeah. Yeah. So they have rules. So you can't like jack up the pressure yeah. so that you're shooting. Up. But people will bring their own. But guns. They do that. And then they, then they yeah, go I mean, off into the woods and change it. Yeah. Man, we did that as a gym outing one time. We need to run that oh, back. So it was much so fun. much fun. They're uh, you just I mean, run around and just so in college we used to the entire football team once a year would go out to this place oh, and we would so do the, uh, civil war lineup where it's like all the offense would line up with their shirts off and all the defense <laughs> and you would we start twenty yards apart and shoot and if you got hit you're out and you just what do you keep mean taking civil war like you know like they like used to line up in lines lined up oh just like lines. old fashioned just, war so yeah. I'd be facing Travis he's on the defense I'm on the offense and we just three two one fire boom. And is it, it one shot or it's was one? It? It's just one shot each. And then you would keep taking a step forward. Well, one of the years there was oh. one defensive guy left and I swear it was like 25 offensive guys and they were all from me to you and they got to shoot him. He was oh. messed up. That after. would hurt. <laughs> it was so much fun to watch though. Yeah. For you're you. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, not if you're that guy. That he was, was like, ah, ah. <laughs> That hey, the defense so needs to step up. It sounds uh, like, yeah, Man. I think people back out though. Like you didn't even get hit. You're like, screw this. It's getting yeah, too close. Like, you already <laughs> submit. You dodgeball in school. Do you think? Yeah. Yeah. For Good. sure. Boston talks about it. Cool. Cause I'm like, what did you say? We played that dodgeball. Cool. They play all sorts of games, man. That is, that used to be so much fun. I, I got worried that that would be something taken. I mean, I don't think dodgeball will ever go away. Good. Cause if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge. <laughs> oh, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what are you throwing at your kid? That's from yeah, the movie throw, yeah, Dodgeball. I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't actually throw a wrench at my kid. <laughs> Every once in a while. It's occasionally. Tough him up from the bee sting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you just finished Rogue a few weeks ago. Yep. I don't know if you talked to anybody about that on camera or not, but I'm interested. I did. Oh, the other show, day. Him, yeah. show him that sweet the other day. Buck, belt oh, yeah. buckle. I actually noticed other that. Side. I figured that. Who's the cowboy? What's his name? The the guy that does CrossFit that's always oh, wears Oh, Sean. Sean Sweeney. Like, yeah, that's right. What are you talking about? The CrossFit that's <laughs> well, a cowboy. Who's that? Who is it? Yo, that uh, always, he would have probably loved all this yeah. stuff. Yeah. But yeah, so they gave us these awesome belt buckles and boots. Show the camera right here. That actually is Hello. something I was going to ask. So 
in the past, it's been in Columbus. You went up there. What was it? Two years ago? The last time so they had two it? years, the f- two years ago was the first year they did it. And it was in Columbus, last, right? Yeah. Then this last year was COVID. And then this year they in went Austin, Austin, Texas. Yeah. I, I have to imagine. I've never been to Austin, but I had it was been to Columbus. Rock. Let's not get crazy. A That's true. It was like 25 outside. minutes from Austin. Fair enough. I have to assume though, that Austin's a little bit better place to visit than Columbus, Ohio. I would say yes. No offense to those Dude, that Columbus are from Ohio. Is nice. Columbus isn't bad, but it's not yeah, a yeah. place it's that I'd be Austin. like, man, that's where yeah, I want to go. Yeah. But I feel like also competing, you go to these places, but you You're don't actually even. get to go explore. That is right? true. It's more or less, you pull up, you go to the hotel. Now I go to the venue, I check in, I come back. Then we have briefings, go back. Like even in Dubai, like we get there a couple of days earlier, but it's not like you're really you're like, Oh, you get to go to these cool places. I'm like, right. yeah, but I don't actually get to go explore. And then when the event's done, I usually need to get home to my wife and kids. So it's not like I'm staying there for two or three extra days, like right. exploring and seeing what the city is all about. Cause even when I told people where it was like, Oh, you're going to love it there. And I'm yeah. like, I'll be honest. I didn't see anything. I didn't see a single thing. Well, like, except funny. the final night we went to some barbecue place with tear and it was you awesome. It was, it? Yeah, it was great. What was it called? He obviously, I don't know. Remember it. They were saying how it was like this in Austin or yeah. in the suburb. And it was kind of like a Chipotle style. Like you walked oh, in. Man. See, I love places like that. And then there was like, you would get your drinks or beer or whatever you Did wanted. It like it seemed like a farm kind of, Did they have like benches and stuff. That was the dumbest description. <laughs> yeah, like it seemed like a, a farm. Bench. They have barbecue they sauce have like on the table. Barbecue. <laughs> they have benches instead of seats, proper seats. No, they have okay. seats. But then you would like go to the next one, and then you pick all the sides that you wanted, and it's all displayed. Then you go to the next station, and it's like all the meat, and you just say, "I want this, I want this, I want this." And it's then just then like just, one price, or is everything a la carte? Well, it would just yeah, a la carte. yeah. So it would just change based off how much you wanted. And That's then nice. so there was sausage, and then there was brisket, and then there was ribs, and you could just I want this, and they just pull it out fresh, yeah. which was really cool, and it was really good. But, but that dude, was that's a, like one experience out of the week. Did they have cornbread? Yes. Yes. Every, okay. I, no, no. Here's the problem. I've been trying to find barbecue around here, and half the places don't have cornbread. Well, it's not real barbecue then. That's what I'm you saying. You have I, to have I, cornbread. I mean, I grew up in Memphis, so right, we're, well, we're the so barbecue capital. Are you, you a, know, cornbread? Are you a true cornbread folk, or are you the sugar cornbread folk? I'm <laughs> any cornbread you put in my face, folk. I see. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> I, I love, love cornbread. cornbread. I just made cornbread um, yesterday, Sunday, with Kinsley. You made your own you cornbread? You made cornbread? You never heard just randomly? It was out of the, it was out of the box. Just it random? Here. Well, she loves cornbread, and so do I. So we like do, every Sunday we make something your together. Your daughter so it's like loves cornbread? She is a cornbread freak. That's like amazing. You I know. be two years old. And already <laughs> <laughs> You're already addicted to cornbread. She, and she even has a country accent when she says it. Hey, Daddy, can you bring me some cornbread? <laughs> don't ever do that. Don't <laughs> who's she taking that after? Because I feel like Jordan or you don't talk like that. So who is she getting that from? Uh, probably her grandpa or something. Oh. Who knows? I was like, who's talking no, like that? just kidding. Oh, uh, what, what I was going to say, though, is it, like, it's funny. People that go and compete in Miami or for Wadapalooza always say, oh, I love going out to Miami, especially those that are up north, right? But it's only the people that are in like only competing for fun, not, yeah. the, not the elite division where everyone has to stay focused all weekend. Yeah. So, but it is true. Like it's a really awesome city. If you don't live down there to yeah. go and visit, but if you're out there like you, you don't get, I mean, a you don't get that experience, around. right? So yeah. even at Wadapalooza, like you're at the hotel next to the venue in between events, you go right back, yeah. you go back. Like there's no like, Oh, I'm going out and I'm exploring. I mean, at least I never do. I know some people like to, or maybe get there a day early and can go do those things. But right. even if it's early, I don't want to fatigue myself. Yeah, I don't want to be out on, in the sun. Yeah. I don't want to be doing those things. So the only time would be after, but usually when I'm done, I need to get back home. So I don't really ever get to like explore. Like, yeah, I've been to cool places, but you're not actually doing anything. Yeah. So it's just like I'm in a hotel and then I go to a venue to compete. How would you compare rogue to the games? I know there are a ton of differences just yeah. because the amount of people that are there, but it, high, it was high level athletes. It's only an elite division. Yeah, I mean, it, so it was invite only, which is cool. I mean, I think that's a, pretty cool thing to be a part of and how the sports kind of grown that it's like, okay, there's only these select individuals that we're going to invite, which is cool. So, you know, you're still competing against literally it was the top 20th in the world, sure. maybe 22 with a couple backfill spots on how they did things, but you're competing against the best there, which is cool because it was what six or eight weeks after the games. So you still had time to kind of like build up prep again, Yeah, as much as you want downtime after, which if it was just pushed a few more weeks would have been nice, but from that side of things, it just is what it is. Yeah. But overall, the entire event on how they, I would say, treat the athletes, the experience, the 
access to the venue, kind of how they handle everything, I would say is just better. Yeah. Like all around than like the games kind of experience. Like the games is a spectacle. It's awesome. Sure. Like it's, I mean, I guess I've been seven times. So like I've had a lot of experiences from Carson to now Madison, like you get to see it differently. And I think they progressively get better each year, but for rogue just seems to, and maybe because it is way less athletes, it's not as many masters divisions and teams. It's literally like, okay, you have 40 individuals, right? This is it. So it's easier to accommodate that and make it work where the games just sometimes seems too much is yeah. happening. For it definitely that. is harder when you have as many athletes that compete at the game, especially yeah. with, like you said, the masters and team divisions, team divisions as well. But you know, I wonder if people from CrossFit are taking notes on how these other competitions are running. I would uh, hope so. But yeah. I mean, I think that we could come to something that's like a really awesome setting for the athletes and the spectators. Yeah. Because I mean, that to me, it seems like the rogue, <laughs> could almost take over and like make their own games if they technically wanted to. Well, with the prize purse they had, man. Yeah. I mean, so like from the first year it was what 50,000, if you won to now it's 250 where then you're just looking at the progress progression of rogue. It's three years that that's been happening, right? Or this was the third year, right? Like, so the games has been happening and I mean, it's come a long way from what it originally was. But even if you look at like the last five years, it was like 275 to 310. But even if you still are top, 20, like you're not really getting paid right. to be there and do 15 events or you're getting cut or something else yeah. where say you were coming from Australia, like some of those people spent 30 grand just to come here and compete and then didn't even make any money. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I get it. But if you're trying to treat it as a professional sport, like it needs to be handled more like a professional sport. Sure. And I think people are like, Oh, well it's a lot of money. And I'm like, yeah, but look at, if you had 500,000 people that signed up in the open that paid $20, like I mean, you're paying for the quarterfinal, semifinals, open. I pay to be an affiliate. I pay to be the uh, judges course. I, like, there's all these other little things that even then when you get to the games, you're like, huh. Okay, Did you well, tally up how much you had to pay to do the games? No. Not, no. I mean, I could kind of like. I mean, the expenses minus, are high. Minus travel, but even like just all the fees? Do you know? No. I mean, but then you look at, um, what was it? Even just, I have to pay to go compete at the games. Right. Like. You would think once you made it to that point, like I get it, like you need to accommodate different things, but it's like I'm paying to then go there to yeah. compete again after I just paid for the open quarterfinals, semifinals, then to go to the whatever. Which one was in person? Semifinals? Or yeah, semifinals. Okay, yeah, I quarterfinals. Yeah, quarterfinals. Yeah. I, I don't remember which one was at the You gym won or the which quarterfinals. One. Yeah. <laughs> you, you won the world. Yeah. So from that <laughs> side, that. <clears throat> and just little things like that that like Rogue kind of handled and took care of. For sure. Which, makes the athlete experience better, makes it more enjoyable, I'd say overall. But I think as the sport continues to grow, hopefully they'll take lessons from all of these and yeah. make it better. And I, I mean, it's gotten better, of course, from what it was, if you look back at when it was at the ranch to what it is now and how big of a spectacle it is. But I definitely think there's areas to improve it and make the athletes feel more like professional athletes For sure. and how it's handled. Um, even from like little things like, okay, it's going to be 15 events or it's going to, and this is the point structure and this is how it's actually going to flow and go versus no, you're not going to find out till you get here. And it's the unknown. It's like, okay, I get the concept of that, but you can still release a lot of information to make it feel more professionalized than just like on the spot. Hey, there's a handstand walk standard yeah. and you guys are going to figure it out at the same time our judges are. And now there's going to be a lot of confusion and no For one's sure. going to really know where it's like, if you would have just came out made a video, like, Hey, athletes, individuals, here's some new standard. We're probably going to be bringing out. You probably want to practice this. You don't know the format. You don't know anything, which doesn't matter. But at least then when it's aired on CBS, we all don't look ridiculous and yeah. failing a handstand push up. when even to now, like I'm 10 times better at it, which is great as it keeps evolving. But like as a sport, when you're watching that on TV, if someone at home is sitting like, what's wrong with this person? Right. Like, he's flailing all over the place and doesn't know what he's doing, falling on his head. And yeah, I mean, we've talked about this before. I think we talked about yeah. it right after the games. You don't see other sports making huge mistakes because they know exactly what to expect and then they can practice well, And the it. rules don't change every right. time. Exactly. I mean, like the, the burpee standard has changed 
700 times to what it is. Part of that is they have to refine it to make it easier for judges and they want to challenge the athletes. I totally get that. But you know, this is actually a question I did have for you because there were some new movements with like either like you had to carry certain things at Rogue or like the over under the log. I don't know what they they called those movements. Over under. Yeah. So (laughs) you were going over over the log and then you went under it. Right. And, And all those things are cool. But at some point I wonder if it's like, would it just be better if the sport had a set number of movements that every competition had to kind of adhere to? And it's like the, may the best win. Like, Hey, you know that these 55 movements are in here and these are going to be the styles. I don't know if that would work, but it just seems like that would make it more, uh, it would be easier for the viewer too, because you knew it just like I watch the NFL. Yeah. I know every single rule of what's going on in the NFL. So I know exactly what to expect. And it's fun because now every perform- performer on the field is high level. Yeah. Whereas like you mentioned, there were no one at the games that could do the handstand, uh, the freestanding handstand yeah. to the standard that they asked because they didn't say in anything until five minutes before. Yeah, That's frustrating as a viewer and it's frustrating as a coach. And I'm sure it's even more frustrating as an athlete. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on that? Would you like I mean, that? I don't necessarily think we need to know. Yeah. I mean, like the set, but I mean, I feel like if the standard was across the board or if there is a new implement or something's coming out that you haven't, you release it maybe at the beginning of the year and say, Hey, <laughs> not this even is- the year. Like even if you gave the athletes <clears throat> three days, but yeah. like if we had, if, even if you announced it at the beginning of the week of the games, like this new movement's coming out, like the handstand push up, like at least you can, most of us can kind of adapt pretty For quick sure. to understand what that movement is and what they're wanting as a standard versus I get into the workout my judge counts my first six and then my next six don't count, which I don't feel like I changed. Yeah, they look exactly but, the same. And so like those little things that you can kind of figure out to a degree. But then I also think like the unknown aspect of it is cool. And that's what always keeps it interesting is that you don't ever know till you get there. So, I mean, I can see it from both sides. Of- so my pushback to that would be, you could still keep the unknown of reps and time yeah, that's and true. all those other th- aspects, you know, they could hold you in the back for longer. Like yeah. they could do all of those things that they wanted to, but still the movement, they know that now everyone knows exactly what the standard is and exactly what's going to happen with this movement. But then maybe they tell you the reps right beforehand. Yeah. Hey, it's 25 freestanding handstand pushups and then 20, then 15 or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I think definitely possible. Yeah. So, I mean, what I was your I favorite it, workout I don't see it happening, but <laughs> what was your favorite workout at rogue? Mm, I would probably say, whoa, oh, Chris. whoa. down goes whoa. the Royal whoa, Rumble, Rumble chair. chair is down. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I feel like the, my favorite one, since you're thinking about this was the last workout until you tripped. Over the bar. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, that was probably the most fun workout. I mean, any sort of lifting event is just yeah. fun. Like the energy is exciting. Oh, besides, the first night, the lift. Yeah. Besides the elevator awesome. music that was happening. Was there <laughs> elevator music? So they had like copyright issues with like music no. and stuff like the first day. So then at night, like we walked out onto the floor and I was like, what is happening? Like, what is this music that we are listening to? And it literally was just like elevator music. But then the, no next, way. the next day they got it figured out and it was fine for the rest of the weekend. But it was definitely funny walking out. You were like, well, this is interesting. Um, but the energy of the crowd and everything. Yeah. So that event, the, I mean, it was cool to add in the hill. Like it's yeah. not very often you think they're going to put a hill in the middle of a baseball field. It's hard to tell. And obviously I wasn't there in person. Uh, was it super steep? It, like was, it was pretty it steep. Was hard. It was hard. To I get mean, up. it's like, it was like this. Yeah. Like, so from the side view, you could definitely tell how steep it was, right. but like watching on camera, you can't really tell. Um, it didn't really, se- I don't feel like separate much in the workouts, but I mean, it was kind of cool to see. Yeah. Do just something different. Yeah. It was more sketchy watching people come down the hill like you just that. go like this and then you went straight to flat which was a little i feel like that's harder than running up a hill especially with my oh, knees coming man. down hurts. yeah <laughs> sketchy yeah um i yeah i mean the final event was pretty cool i thought it was i mean it's exciting it was interesting that they allowed the other top five to bypass the first round yeah which i feel, feel like was almost worse for them because they had to wait they even longer up. so we all went down at the same time so regardless if you were first second third fourth heat you went down into the dugout and just hung out the whole time. So for us that was able to go faster, we didn't have to wait for the reseeding yeah. and all the other stuff. So the top five probably had to wait like 25, 30 minutes, which that is brutal with the snatches. The, yeah. And so for them, like those little mess ups and since they already got a buy to the second round, which I feel like the other day when me and Max kind of talked about this was, I don't know if it was even necessary. Like if you're adding everybody, the pressure of they have to perform and do well, like, why are they getting a buy? I agree. Like you, 
if I'm top five in other workouts, I don't get to buy on other workouts. Yeah. Like, you know, like, oh, okay, you can just skip to the skip past the row or just start at the step ups. Like <laughs> you don't right. get to just start somewhere else. Like, but and especially it, with a test like that, because that is like so different, so much different than the other events yeah. that even number one could do poorly. And as yeah. you saw, number two did do poorly in that yeah. event. I mean, and it was just like, and it could have been like the rest time in the back and for sure. I, I don't think it would have changed much overall based off of what it was. Like, I feel like if you still did well, like you look at Justin, like he still did well and yeah, he sat sure. around the whole time too. So it does, it's just, I guess how you would perform in that situation. But so w what was going through your head when you started that event? There was one, I don't know. It, it was maybe the second, third round, I, the third tripped? round I tripped on the double. Okay. So third the round, first two rounds, I was smooth, smooth through it. Third round. But you kept I speeding up though. Yeah. Yeah. And so then I went for the third one or no, the first one on my third round and literally just the first rap just tripped yeah. and was like, well, uh oh, so then grabbed the rope and just went as fast as I could, kept my balance super short and was trying to like literally just speed double under. Right. And then Abel was to catch up and man, it is crazy watching. There were probably three or four guys that had similar cadence to you yeah. that could like actually fluctuate their speed, which you do with your normal rope yeah. too. Like you have, like, if you're doing 200, you'll slow it down a little bit and breathe. And if you're doing 30, you can go really yeah. fast. But some of the guys were just so much slower, even yeah. though they didn't trip, you tripped, sped up and then still pass them going into snatches. So that, I mean, it is a nice skill to have. Yeah. And I mean, I think it varies too with that rope. Like that rope is, if you don't play with it enough, is very heavy and awkward. So it's hard to like speed up where with like a normal jump rope, you can kind of yeah manhandle almost like the rope to do what you want it to where this, there's a lot more weight. So like the forearms start to burn, the grip starts to burn, like the shoulders and it's only 60 reps, which you don't think is a lot with the normal rope. But when you add the heavy rope to it, it's like the cable's heavy, the handles are heavy. It makes a difference. Yeah, and I mean, then I it hurts still be on way the first worse round. when it hits you. Like it hurts <laughs> yeah. really bad when it hits you. Um, but then you just had to be smooth from right. everything else. And it was little things like even the first round. So I always start with a double under my judge didn't count my first one mm. because they think I'm doing a single first. Right. So then every time after that, I'd go up to the judge and I'm like, look, I start with a double under, like, make sure you count this. And so then, cause I'm counting too. So yeah. I have an idea. And then they kind of got it figured out. Then the final round before I ate it, the judge, <clears throat> I swore in my head, I was counting. What are the other ones? Like my double earners were as fast as I could possibly go. <laughs> but then we went back and watched the video and I was wrong. They counted correctly. Um, but then when I think I just got mentally frustrated, went to the bar, did the snatches. And then as I jumped, I mean, even I posted a video the I other day it, that Richard yeah. took and I mean, it was half an inch, so close. maybe even less than that of like, my toe just nicking the You were bar. probably that close on every single oh, one. 100%. Except that just happened. That, that you one happened it. to get If me. you could yeah. go back and do it again, would you not trip on the bar? Yeah, I think so. You I would, would just do my jump best. higher? You'd choose to just- Jump well, higher or I would push it down. Push it and then go. Yeah. Like that. But those little things of like pushing it down and like pausing for like milliseconds makes a big difference than if I just like- It does. I'm going to take the chance and jump and just hope I you make it over. You were getting off the bar the same time as- there was at least one other guy, but there were a couple guys behind you. Yeah. So if you didn't trip, you would have been able to kind of, it, it would have been a battle to who could sprint through the line. Yeah. I mean, who if was you looked in at, first at that, on that event, uh, Guillermo. Okay. So if you looked at most of them, so me and Guillermo were in every heat together Yeah. and it was literally one and two every single time. So right. I was hoping it was going to come down to me and him at the very end, right. just to kind of like see. Um, but I mean, it just, Man, it is, is what it is. Strong dude. Man. It's impressive. Yeah. Hey, Although didn't you say that if you had won that, you still would have yeah. placed the so same. So if I won, and he finished where he finished, like if he took second or something, or it still wouldn't have changed where I right. finished on the leaderboard. So going into that event, I was ninth. I kind of had an idea on where I wanted to be at the end of the weekend was top five. And I knew like the point spread based off of Max telling me what it was kind of, I didn't really watch the leaderboard at all until that final event. Like I know where I'm kind of sitting. It's like, yeah. okay, I'm in the final heat and you can kind of base off a of corral, like, all right, I kind of have an idea on like what place I'm in, even though I'm not like paying Hold attention on, so to the leaderboard. So this competition purposely, you didn't look at the leaderboard? Yeah, not at all. Is this the first time you've done that? Yeah. Oh, nice. So Max, the one of the things we worked with our mental coach was I was not going to be on social media and then I don't look at the leaderboard and he handles all of that. Yeah. So then after each workout, he would just be like eighth, third, and that was it. Like that was all I knew. Don't know where anybody else finished. And it kind of just took the stress away of like, 
oh, I need to win this or I need to be here. Or, this person's, a, it just doesn't matter. And it distracts me more from like what I'm trying to accomplish. So then going into the final one, I was like, well, what place am I in? Cause I want to move up clearly. Um, and he was like, well, you're ninth, but the point spread to like fifth was like 25 points. So I was like, okay, that's not very much. And on a workout like this, somebody in front of me messes up for sure. I can definitely jump above all of them. Um, and so after the first round, second round, third round, I was like, okay, well, I'm kind of going to be sitting hopefully pretty good. Um, and then finished out sixth overall. Yeah, man, it was the second time too. Like the first sixth? year I wrote, I took. Were you six? Six? No kidding. And then I didn't realize I took. I've taken twelfth of the games three times. Yeah. Hey, that's consistency. It is consistent. That's a good. I thing. like to be better. Yeah, but that's okay. <laughs> consistency is key. At least that's. But what it was funny because I was that. like, yeah, that's twice I've taken second and Mac or twelfth. The Max is like, no, that's the third time. And I was like, no, it wasn't. And then <laughs> I pulled it up. And I was like, it's the third time I've taken twelfth. So. How, what is it, the dynamic like, but you know, it was just you and Max, right? Did you yeah. guys share a room or did you have two separate rooms? You we did. We shared. Okay. Since what, what is that like with, you I know, realized that the coach? games, I don't, I don't like being in a room by myself for hours yeah. and hours and hours. Like it just, my mind starts going and I think about stupid things and it's just not beneficial for me as an athlete. So one of the things that I was like, you can come hang out with me cause I'm going to be bored. <laughs> I saw you guys were putting around in the room. <laughs> yep. That was pre competition though. So yeah. So it was pre-competition, during the competition, post-competition, literally any okay, given so point in time, the entire weekend, we had a game going on of some sort. That's so nice. we got there, we were sitting in the hotel and we were just kind of bored. So then I was like, well, we should go get a putter from Walmart. So we bought a putter and balls and then we <laughs> used a coffee mug and then flattened out the bottom. So it was like yeah. a hole and then you'd place it at different spots throughout the room and then make challenges. You could put obstacles, kind of like miniature putt, putt ramps. Like we did all sorts of different things. We actually had like an 18 hole match. We then had like pig and then we bought a basketball goal too. So then on the room, oh my was back. Goodness. so kind of constantly throughout the whole weekend, we were competing at something. And then just one of the rules was you can trash talk in the room as much as you want. But as soon as we go to cross it, we stop our trash talk. Yeah. So from that side of things, it was fun. Kept everything kind of lighthearted and Relaxed. Yeah, for sure. What is Max's role <sighs> at, in the competition though? I know you said that he was the one that's keeping track of scoring, which may, I mean, he would do even yeah. if you didn't want that, but like, where do you tell Like you guys have been together now, however many like years, 10 years, 10 almost. years. Where do you draw the lines of like, this is when I want you to talk to me. This is when I don't want you to say anything. Or is it more just like kind of, you let the flow go. And yeah. I mean, I feel like you just kind of let the flow kind of the energy. Yeah. I feel like this event was probably one in a long time that I've actually had like fun and enjoyed being right. there just based off of like not getting stressed about the leaderboard, social media distractions and the media and different things that like get posted that kind of like can frustrate you, For um, sure. which is honestly just out of your control and there's no point to get worked up about it, but it would. And even at the games, I was like, man, all year, like we've worked on certain things and I've done so well. And then a lot of old mistakes and things that were causing me to slip up were happening again. And I was like, what is, and then when we started to like really dial into like, or figuring out what is happening, it was like, okay, social media, leaderboarding, like those kind of things just really took me out of like just being present and focused. Yeah. Um, so, so do you, do you is, think you'll use that same format moving forward? Yeah. You're doing a couple competitions. Dubai is yep. coming up. Yeah. So Dubai, I leave in three weeks. So that will be kind of something we'll focus on. Same concept yeah. of just the thing there though, is I don't really have service, so I can't really <laughs> yeah. check anything or see anything from that regards. Um, but yeah, his role usually has kind of changed from events to events and over the years from what it started at to what it is now is way different. But I think you just kind of have to figure out what works best. And for us, it's keep things very lighthearted and fun. And then, when it's time to be like, okay, like you need to turn it up now. Like this is the workout you need to try and push. Then he'll say something. And then most of the other time though, I don't want to say I'm going to do what, what I think is best regardless of whatever he says. Yeah. Like I'm still going to make the final right. decision. I'm the one going out on the floor. But you have, yeah, you have to because so, you're the one taking the risk. Yeah. And so I think over the years, like it's more just a comfort thing of having him there and like knowing who to talk to and trust and value versus like, he's not going to sit there and give me snatch tips while I'm like about to do a one <laughs> yeah. RM. Like, it's just like, no, you just trust whatever you're doing. Like, right. Even when we were warming up for the one RM or the, that clean complex, like I was in the back just warming up the normal way I would. And then when I got to three fifteen, he was like, all right, call it there. And that was really like, okay, 
should I go heavier? And he's like, nah, you probably don't need to just get yourself fired up and then hit it out on the floor. So then it was like, well, what's your opener? Tell him, okay, maybe you go here. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And then ultimately I'm the one making the decision once I get out onto the floor. So my original plan was to go 315 or 317, 335 ish. And then if I could hit 345, I was going to be pretty happy when we're walking out or in the back 315, when I warmed up felt very good. So I was like, and he's like, why don't you go 322? So we went 322, 337, 352. Um, and then after the, when we walked out onto the floor, I saw Andre hit or they announced 352. So I was like, okay, that's kind of the number right. on where I need to try to shoot for. So I hit 322, then hit 337. And then I remember trying to like look around. I'm like, where is he? Like, but it's still my decision. And I, sure. and I didn't find him. Like there's a lot yeah. of people there. You're like. I don't know where he's standing. Yeah. Um, I mean, you couldn't find the big guy with bald head <laughs> compared to the strong man. No, you can't <laughs> find him true. anywhere. That is um, true. He looks tiny. He looks like just someone small over in the corner. Um, so then going into the final one, I remember I loaded up half the bar and I just, I was the second lifter so I could see people on their second lifts, what they were going to kind of hit. And most people, when you're going to the final one, you're going to probably push sure. the line. So if I like knew someone's second lift was at 315, like I knew they weren't going to jump to 350. Like that's usually not going to happen. Um, so just kind of watched, to watch. And I think it got around, I think I maybe like there was two people or three people before me. And then I changed from 350 to 352. Cause I remember putting 350 on. And then at one point I looked at Cole and I was like, man, what's the difference of two pounds? He's like, I don't know. Just go for it. Yeah. So I was like, all right. So then I remember putting like one pounds on, and then ended up hitting it, and I was pretty pumped up about, about that. I mean, yeah, my best was, ever clean and jerk is 360. Yeah. So to pretty much clean it, jerk it, front squat, jerk, I mean, I was fired up. I mean, everything looked super easy except for the jerk. That where, final jerk yeah. was, oh. But it was a great save. Yeah, I just, I don't know how I saved it, honestly. When like, you were doing the clean, though, it was like, man, he probably could go up another 10 pounds. Yeah, the, the clean way, felt looked, great. Right. But when I got the first jerk even felt really solid, I was like, oh, yeah. all right, we got this. And then I front squatted it. And then when I went to the jerk, I could just tell it was a little forward and uh -huh. it started to cave. And I was like, no, I mean, your arms bent. I bet you your hands <laughs> came down like three inches. Dude, yeah, it I, was a big, I mean, it was bend. good. <laughs> I was push pressing. <laughs> the fact that you can push press that basically a strict press by yeah. the end of that. It's close. I'm good at that. Yeah. With some incline. Ugh, what was the out. difference? The, the one thing, the one event that I thought that you would, not that you didn't do well, but that you would have crushed was the rope climb. I think yep. that was the first event. First event? It just looked like everyone, the rope climb was really, really hard with the weight vest. Was it just it was. like a shock? Was it grip? Yeah, was I mean, it lats? For me, my grip doesn't usually ever seem to, knock on wood, <laughs> go. It's usually just like a different physical aspect or limitation right. for me is kind of like the hold up. When I was climbing, almost every time I would get within like a foot and a half, I just felt like, I was going to come back down. Yeah. Like, I was like, I'm going to fall back down. Like I just didn't feel smooth. It didn't feel like I normally do on rope climbs. Like in the middle of it, I was like, well, this is not the way I would see this going. <laughs> and so it was just, it, the separator was definitely the second round. Yeah. Like coming back, if you would have been fast there, like you could have made up a ton of time. And I remember I came back, did my first one and I was like, oh, I'm going to have to take like some legit breaks to make sure this counts because right. if you miss a rope, oh, then you're really screwed. Yeah. And then it's just progressively going to get worse. So I remember waiting and just being patient. And I think I probably could have pushed the pace a little bit more than what it was at. But when I got to like my fifth ones, I remember there was times like you were death gripping because as soon as you lean back, all the vest weight is pulling it's you the opposite direction. You. So yeah. you're like fighting that much more to hang on. And it definitely was like my grip on that one that, seem to go. Man, that's so. the worst feeling too, because when your grip goes, you do, like you just mentioned, squeeze harder and yeah. then it just goes even faster. Yeah. But you don't, you can't relax. Whereas no. like normally you watch yourself do a rope climb and you're kind of like smooth with your hands. It doesn't ever well, look And like then you can, if it's locked, you can still kind of like, I don't want to say relax in that position, but pour, put Almost more pressure go, yeah. in your legs. But like, you that could. just was not happening. Yeah. Like as soon as I would lean back, it felt like my kid was pulling me back, down, which is essentially <laughs> yeah, what it exactly. is. It's a little kid on my back, <laughs> just hanging on, which you would well, think then I you had should a lot be of, good. <laughs> I don't usually climb with him. So something I'll be working on this yeah. off season. Have you with. been doing any of those over the last couple of weeks? No, to be honest, I haven't yeah. at all. Yeah. I think, uh, we, as soon as we got back, I knew Dubai was coming. And so then, man, I think I took like the full week off. And then was going to train 
like the beginning of that week. So I trained like Monday, Tuesday, ended up getting sick on Wednesday, pretty much took off till Sunday, then had an issue with my knee that I went to get worked on. And then, so then now I've honestly trained very little. Yeah, since I was going to say your then. training hasn't been as consistent, but you're yeah. back in it now. And yeah, so and like roll. today's kind of like day one back. Yeah. And so now we have about three weeks <laughs> leading up to Dubai fast turnaround. Yeah. And it's just probably the kind of same expectation as rogue is don't really set super high standards and expectations just based off of like what's kind of been happening. And so like leading up to this and where my training is kind of felt, but Usually in three weeks, you can at least refine a lot of skills. and Well, for breathe. someone at your level, for yeah. sure. Like for me, I just, I need my breathing to feel good. And then I'll feel good kind of about everything else. Right. Like my strength usually kind of has been maintaining pretty well. So if that still stays the same and I can just get my breathing under control, then I'll be good. Yeah. So what is next? Like wh where do you see yourself in the next couple of years? Obviously you're doing Dubai and then I know that's short term. And yep. then you are doing Wadapalooza on a team. Is that correct? It's possible. Possible. It's still up in the air. Still up in the air. Okay. But and slash we're not really saying oh, who knows. Yeah. No, you okay. can say. Sorry. But I don't know if we're going to do it. I, I was just kidding. I was just kidding about Wadapalooza. Um, and then, and then the right it just doesn't, I mean, you can say I'm doing yeah. it. I'm just not telling you what to do. <laughs> right after Wadapalooza, if you do yeah. it, it's open season. Yep. And then Wait, the game. What's the, how, what's the distance between <coughs> Dubai and Wadapalooza? Not very much. It's like right around the corner. <laughs> That's a question I have for you. What does it feel like doing these bigger competitions back to back uh, to back? Do you like that, I guess? Yeah, let's see. Hold on. So Dubai is the 16th through the 18th. So then it's one, two, three, four, five, I think five weeks to. Yeah. But you got to keep in mind, you're, you're going to be flying back. You're going to take a little bit of a deload. Yeah, then it's Christmas. So, yeah, Christmas time. And so you'll, it's the same thing as after Rogue where you'll have like maybe two or three weeks of training. So like full in, training. If you do it. Yeah, yeah. So from that side is, that's what will kind of be happening. But I mean, do you like this like constant competing or is this just. I mean, I think for radar? me it helps. Like it kind of is like a good indicator of like where my fitness is kind of at. And you can kind of see throughout the year what it is like you can compete on a whiteboard and see and be like, okay, well I'm doing pretty well, but how people do on a leaderboard, it's always skeptical versus like in-person events. And for you, that's the difference, right? Like you are, you I'm great. crush the open, yeah, you great. crush qualifiers. So let me do some yeah. in-person events. So for me, I think it's beneficial to do these because it almost keeps the competitive edge a little higher and feel more comfortable than like getting into a situation where, you don't compete all year due to COVID. And then it's like, okay, well now you have the games and then it's like, oh, okay, well you just kind of like forget the feelings and the different things. And like, you know what to do, but it just, sometimes you forget little things that happen or you're not aware of. And, and it also allows me to practice things that we've like tried to implement For like sure. the mental side of things, the leaderboard, like the things I don't always do. If it was once a year, I'd probably forget about versus now I'm able to test it games. Okay. What happened to the games? Okay. Well, this is what we need to fix. Okay. We put those things in a play at rogue. Okay. That actually went well. And I actually had fun, which I haven't done in a long time. And then it makes it more of an enjoyable experience for me to be there and like want to do this yeah. versus like, I have to do this. And then now I can change what we did at rogue to now test it at Dubai. And then I can test it again at Wadapalooza. Then I can test it again. So for me, I think personally doing these is good. Now, is it always the smartest thing training wise and doing that many competitions? Probably not. But for me, if it's not good mentally, then it's going to be much worse and then you won't last as long. So, yeah. And I feel like at, at your stage in your career, it's easier for you to do a competition without having this huge buildup. So it's not like you're yeah. crushing yourself in training and then you're resilient enough that you can do a three day competition, yeah. take a little deload and come back. I think the tendency for most athletes that aren't at a high level is they think they need to compete all the time, which yeah. is obviously a good thing, but then they're never getting better at the weaknesses. Like you're implementing the things that you want to work on yeah. in competition. They're not having that time to build their muscle up capacity yeah. or handstand pushups. And they're just yeah. doing all these com competitions. <laughs> I feel like for me, it was at the beginning of like when I first started, I used to do all these local events all the right. time. And I was like, man, I'm crushing it. I'm doing awesome. But then like, you never have that time of like building. So then I remember Max being like, you need to stop competing for a while so that we can actually like work on this stuff. And then yeah. we built everything up to where it is now. So it's like, it's been a 10 year process for sure. to be able to do that and handle that amount of volume and training in a day where when you look at the volume from rogue, it was pretty low relative to what we typically do. Yeah. Right. Like the longest event was like, 12, 15 minutes where leading up into the games, like you're doing 90 minute sessions of like a full workout. And so like that stuff for on your body versus like, Hey, let me do seven right. workouts. I have one, I have a four hour break before I have another one. 
is very nice. And yeah. so it's just like, okay, I can it's do It's a training weekend basically yeah. for you. So like the amount of time I probably worked out was an hour <laughs> yeah. over the course of three days. Like when right. you actually add up the total time of like how long we were on the floor to like being done was pretty low relative to the games. When you have a 25, in, a 25 minute event, you have these longer events that take place. Like the first one was an hour and something, the kayak and swim. So like right. those things add up over time over the course of five days where three days and it was only seven events was nice. Yeah. I, think, here's, I think it was even better for the athletes too. This just popped into my head. What would seven years ago, Travis be most shocked about current Travis's fitness? How strong I am. I don't know though, man, back in 2013, you're I front strong. squatted 420. but how strong I snatched you stayed. Two. You've, you've, yeah. I mean, you're consistent. Yeah. Like back then I feel like I had just like random days of like, crazy strength and just, I mean, I remember we went in 2013 cause it was on my birthday. It was like hit a 370 clean shortly after front squatted 420. Um, then after that, I think I snatched 275 and all that was back in 2013 when like those numbers back then yeah, was huge, super huge, but it was very inconsistent. But like even compared to now where like I can probably hit 370 pretty so that frequently. That was like your best day. Like, yeah. Like yeah. everything was firing. Um, where now it's like the movements are better. Like I can pretty much hit probably 90, 95% almost every single day. And I think that's what's more important than for sure. Hey, I can one rep max snatch 300. Great. But how many can you do for five? And it's like 185. And it's <laughs> like, okay, well there's a big separator there. How do you close that gap? And those are the things I think that is a big difference from then to now, like even some of the strength numbers I've done, I'm like, man, that was actually impressive. I don't know how I did that, but yeah. And again, on a consistent basis. Yeah. Like, do you had a, a leading up to the games? I think you wanted to snatch a certain weight every single week. I don't know what yeah, that number it was, was, but two seventy five yeah. every single time we snatched. Yeah. And you were like, it was easy. Yeah. So like, whereas like, to, wait to your point in two thousand fifteen thirteen. You, yeah. Well, I'm just saying. I remember you oh, were oh. you were working on your snatch in twenty fifteen and super like, it was consistent. Like, yeah. One day you would have like a huge snatch, and then the next, next day I'd be like missing two forty five. Right. And I think that's just, it's part of the process. Like it took me two years or almost two and a half years to ever PR my snatch again. Yeah. And people were upset when they don't hit 95% in the gym. I'm like, I yo, know. that's a great yeah. day. Like, <laughs> you agree. need to be excited about yes. that. Expectations, man. But it's even like the little thing. It's like members would be like, man, I'm bummed I didn't PR. And I'm like, okay, well, it's been a four week progression. Like, there's a <laughs> yeah. lot of things that go into that. You didn't where, sleep last night. Yeah. And I'm like, I mean, I, it took me two and a half years to PR a lot of things where when you don't see any progress and this is what you do for a, a job is very frustrating and hard to wrap your head around of not being able to constantly PR or ring the bell, like not being able to see progress like that is very frustrating. Even if I'm hitting numbers more frequently than I want to hit, it's still, I'm not PRing. Yeah. And we all want that feeling of like, <laughs> you just want just to PR, progress. Like you want to do yeah. better. Especially Even when you're putting you in the time getting, yeah. that you're putting into and it. And you are getting better and you test workouts, but it's not as glamorous. It's not as fun on the camera because it's not. Isn't it fun if we were all in Europe, we'd be saying PBing? Yeah. yeah. That is so true. It annoys the shit PB. out of me when it's I my hear personal like, that's best. peanut butter, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so for all of you PBing. Hey, bang. I hey, bang, boss, <laughs> notch. <laughs> oh, my God. What, what, what accent was that? I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, so then when I don't PB, it's frustrating, but you just kind of get to the point where it's like, it will, it will come when it's time. For and sure. even like the snatch it, the Mac, that I was, was probably say, like yeah, the highlight of my, one of the, my highlights of career was hitting that in that moment, in that situation, being the last one to lift the environment, just knowing all the work leading up to that, all the time I've missed snatches and build up to like having that was like, awesome. So rewarding. And it was so cool that someone captured that. I was going to say you snatch. have a giant picture in the gym now and it is like the, it's the coolest, sweetest yeah. picture. I remember when it happened, Ty took the photo, sent it to me and I sent it to John. I was like, out of all the banners we've ever made, yes. you can burn the other ones. This Make is the this. only one that I actually want yeah. to hang up. Cause this was like, it meant it captured something. a real moment. Yeah, yeah. like it was and a it real was moment. Even better that you were the last guy. Yeah, yeah. So like, it was like you had to answer. Because apparently, like you know, because if you had just been people hit three hundred two or guy number Crazy. one who hit it, then it'd be like, oh, okay, well, you're part of. The but team. it was like, I think there was literally eight people that hit three hundred at the event. Not all in our heat, but I think there was yeah. six, five or six people in our heat. It was like Scott, me, Ben, Insane. Jason, someone else. All in our heat hit three hundred, and just to be able to like, I remember, I like. 
I feel like I blacked out for a slight moment, but I remember hitting it and then just standing up and screaming and just, I mean, the feeling of excitement uh, doing that was... The crowd yelling. Oh, just I mean... Awesome. And it was still like a fifth or something. <laughs> like, geez. But in, in the other events, it would have been first in almost every single one. Yeah. The snatch weights at Mac were just so much higher. And it was, it was crazy. Yeah. Except for the one guy that hit 345. Well, that's true. Yeah. That is insane. Ben Smith, I think he's trying to go for 315 or something. I, I've I mean, seen some I videos. Surprised. He's, a, he's great at a snatch. The other cool thing was it was also like the slow mo video yeah, of the whole it thing. is just it's so cool. nuts. So, I mean, you can see it start to push down too on my right yeah. arm. I'm like, no, <laughs> fighting it up. Oh, I wasn't gonna allow that life. to happen. Yeah. All right, I'm not gonna let you escape the question that I asked earlier. What is the what does the future look like for you? So, like, how much I longer do you want to compete? About that yeah, no, no, not no, that I, think, I even forgot about it. Just, I think this is like a, a multi-part <laughs> question. Are you though. sick? No, I just, so. Oh uh, yeah, did everybody. How do you one? live in a post-COVID world having a? Every 20 second call. Everyone's Man. just jumping. I don't know. Be so yes, stressful. I've been, I've been tested multiple times and I had issues where I had like CT scans, all sorts of other things happen before the games leading up. I was on like three different inhalers, like all sorts of things were going on and like they couldn't figure out what it actually was. Um, and then when I said I got sick a couple weeks ago, it's like now almost like the same exact feelings just of like coughing constantly. constant coughing as soon as I start to warm up like I feel like I just need to like cough but I've been tested multiple times and like they're all negative and but it's just like, on a all day you just have a little it's cough? just like this constant tickle like right here in the back of my throat just where I feel oh. like I need to like cough it all so you don't go out at all do you there's no, no way no, it's the worst. People be looking at you like, man, I yeah. bet you people having PTSD listening to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, right now. I apologize, everybody, but no, it is not COVID. All um, right, no, no more questions. But yeah, so what do I plan to do in a couple what, of years? Yeah, well, a couple of things. How much longer are you going to compete if you've even thought about that, which I know you have, so don't say that you haven't. And then what do you want your legacy to be in the sport? <laughs> uh, from competing, I have thought about it to a degree, but. To how long I think it's whenever my body you're just gonna keep going until yeah. yeah and I in my mind like if I start to fall off a lot and I'm not where I want to be and I've like put my best foot forward then it's like okay it's time like just, it's done but I don't think that's true right now yeah we're coming up I'm still getting stronger I've still hit my biggest lifts I feel like I'm getting better control pacing and different metcons like I'm finally tapping into like more of the mental side of things that are allowing me to be better than necessarily like the physical side I don't think yeah. it's the physical limitation it's gonna be what's happening between the ears and so for me if I can keep that going I mean I'm gonna just keep competing because it's fun um what was the other question what do you want your legacy to be like I feel like you know everyone has kind of like this little thing like people think of like Panchik now that he's kind of I think he's done with the sport yeah like who he is and how consistent he was but I feel like people don't say your name and yeah, some people do. Now people are starting to catch on, especially those yeah. that have been around for a while. But what do you want that when someone says Travis Mayer, what do you want them to think of? I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, I think I'm not, I, I don't really want to say I'm not doing it for a legacy. I'm doing this cause I enjoy it and it's fun. Yeah. And it like part of it is I get to teach my kids how to like not give up and chase their dreams and keep doing it until you, strive till you accomplish what you want to accomplish. But I don't think there's like some legacy I want to like, I'm leaving or I think I'm leaving. I think it's just being like, I'm consistent all the time, regardless if they talk about me or not. Like I've been in the game seven times. I've been in the sport for 10 years. Like I feel like I'm pretty consistent across the board, like taking 12, three times, 10th. Yeah. Like, yeah, I've had some ups and downs, like when you get to the big events and hopefully I can kind of knock that, kind of normal stigma of like, oh, he's just going to be this kind of 10th to 12th place finisher and break through that and have a better year. And I mean, I can't really say that until it actually happens. Right. Um, but in regards to legacy leaving behind, I don't know. I mean, I just have fun doing this. I enjoy coaching. I enjoy owning a gym. I enjoy kind of working out all the time. And I mean, it's a pretty fun job that you come in here and you just get to lift weights and enjoy the trash talk and all the other kind of things right. around there. And, I don't know. I mean, I feel like you're having fun doing it, then it's not really a job. And For I don't sure. really look at it too much as a job, except when I'm like super stressed and yeah. need kind of like a break. Then I'm like, oh no, this is your job. You need to go do it. Um, 
Yeah, I just, you know, I guess I've said this before on a, probably on a podcast with you, but I think it is something that is so impressive that you have been able to stay at a high level for so long and yep. you're still getting better, which you alluded to a second ago. Most people that are in the sport, they slow, like maybe they start really hot. You know, they yeah. get a third I mean, I place started in place. 2013 and I mean, you look right. at most of those people that started with me in 2013, they're, they're not doing it anymore i watched the legends at rogue and i, and couldn't I competed believe, with most of them <laughs> yeah i couldn't believe and this is not a knock on them i know that people have gotten older and beat up but i couldn't believe how poorly they moved and how yep. bad they looked other than rich and again that's not a knock on them it's just like they look so much better in 2013 yeah. whereas you look better now than you did in 2013 and so i think it is pretty cool and it's a testament to obviously how hard you've worked but also just like being patient and yeah. doing all the thing, the right things over the last seven, eight, y- nine years, however long yeah. it's been. And I mean, I think that was one thing with Max, right? Like a lot of it is like, it's not just about having that one shot year where you like right. do well and then you never go back to the games where that's, you've seen that happen to a lot of people where, yeah, that's great. It happened, but like, you still have to be consistent. And like, for me, I want to be consistent. I want to keep doing this. I want the longevity of the sport. And I mean, if I can do this for 15 years and I'm still competing then perfect, like that's better for me. And I just want to be able to keep progressing and getting better. Like if I saw I wasn't progressing and getting better, then I would probably just throw in the towel. Yeah. Like I have four kids at home. I need to like spend time with them, but I enjoy what I do and it's still paying my bills and I get to have fun. So I don't know. I we'll kind of see. All right. Well, we are running up on time because we have other things we to have do other around things here. That have to take place. Yes. I appreciate it. I actually have some other questions. Maybe we should come back on another time, Chris. We can have a little fun episode with Mr. Mayor. Hit him with one of your like uh, weird questions before we roll out. You know, I think one of my weird. favorite questions is, "What's your favorite food combo that's weird? Like t- two oh, things yeah. that you put in to a bowl together or on your plate that people are like, why would you mix those things?" God, I'm probably so boring and basic that I don't. Do yeah, that. actually, that is true. <laughs> you are pretty basic. Well, you get the the pre made meals most yeah, of the time, right? So most of the this meals man are from made Rose a pre made meal with salmon the other man, day. Man, it was stunk delicious. Up the whole room. But it was delicious. He stunk up the whole room. Hey, that's and then fine. threw half of it away. I actually well, no, had to go was, outside was because it was it smelled so bad in here. Hey, it was delicious. Oh, it was gross. You know what? That hit those nasty macros. fish smell. Yeah, it is tough. So you don't have any weird combos. Weird combo. I'm trying to think. Like, I'm not a big condiments kind of person. Like, I don't put a lot of condiments on really anything. What's your favorite condiment? I don't really have one. Like, if you ha- I don't really uh, use it. Okay, you got some chicken nuggets. You're just eating them plain. Yeah. Plain Jane no, you are not. You're putting you are ketchup a on that. Cereal <laughs> dead, <laughs> dead serious. Ask Lauren. There's no chance I put ketchup on any of it. Oh, not man. a chance. Barbecue sauce, honey mustard. Nothing. Honey uh, mustard. What about Chick Fil A sauce? If I go to Chick Fil A. And if I was to get chicken nuggets or I eat my boy's chicken nuggets, it is plain. That is oh. sad. That is so sad. This is what you got to do, guys, to be this consistent at the game. <laughs> yeah. You just eat the same just thing all the time. basic ass chicken nuggets. <laughs> you, you know what? I actually, too. this is probably normal, but mixing honey mustard and ketchup together, is that a sauce? Is yeah. that, is well, that the, it's kind of like the, a sauce. I remember kids in high the school The Chick-fil-A doing that. sauce, I think. Is that the, what that is? I think it's actually their barbecue sauce mixed with their honey mustard. Yeah, I that's, that's also very Chick-fil-A. delicious. And if you look at the calories on Chick-fil-A sauce, <laughs> you will never eat it again. You know, they sell it in the containers at Publix now. One little, like, cup that they give you, like the pre-made cups, that's like a whole day's worth of food. <laughs> well, then what's your weird condiment? What, or uh, My favorite combo. condiment? Or my weird combo? <laughs> I don't know. Brandon, answer. Uh, I, so I like putting the deli mustard on a peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> just oh, kidding. God. I was like, dude, no, no way. That's I, terrible. Well, it's funny because uh, I've been asked that question before, and I'm also bland like you, I, but I am a peanut butter lover, so I mm-hmm. would put peanut butter on almost anything, and I've tried it on steaks. I've tried it on uh, chicken a before. steak? Yeah. You put peanut butter on a steak? Yes. So mm-hmm. you, it's a peanut butter sauce. So you grill the steak no. or you do sous vide. Yes, yes, I'm telling you. You can do no. a bourbon peanut butter sauce as well. You saute What'd it you up. you call it? A bourbon oh, peanut I, butter sauce. I thought and you then, said urban. <laughs> like, What's urban that peanut too. butter? <laughs> You didn't know. <laughs> oh man, but it's so good. And even on like a piece of meat, it's pretty. All tasty. right, here's here's one. Uh, I don't think it's weird. You tell me. I put ketchup on a baked potato. Uh, no, I mean that I potatoes say, and so ketchup. Yeah, well, I mean so, I can. So see Mia it. thinks it's crazy, and I'm like, you know what French fries are, right? French fries is a fried potato. <laughs> it's valid. And, and she's still, they're different. They're different. And I'm like, okay. What do you put on your grilled chicken tender, and what do you put on your fried chicken tender? Do you use different things? Because that's the same <laughs> shit. Like if you put ketchup on your fried potato, yeah. No, I, I don't I feel like it. that one's very. Weird. Although I would do sour cream and butter on well, my. I mean, baked I do potato. that too, but sometimes I want some ketchup on. Yeah, there. you know, uh, huh. Mia puts 
oranges on her chicken and, and her on meat. her yeah her uh, ground she, beef she, that she cooks. It's it's oranges mixed into the meat yes. and something what? else. It's not just I don't oranges. know. It's weird. It's very weird. See now that's weird. Yeah. That's this is where this all came. I was like, how are you gonna shit on my baked potato <laughs> with ketchup <laughs> when you put oranges on everything? Oranges in your. I'm meat. about to go out there and ask her. Yeah, about no, this, it's a true this story. Is strange. Yeah. Although huh. she says it's delicious, which is you know you think about it, people put pineapple on pizza or other sweet things. Those yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to get out of here, Travis. Right. Thanks for coming in today, my friend. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on.